Welcome everyone to Bonifab Custom. My name's Rob, and today we're gonna to be looking at the double barrel throttle body. Now, this is a throttle body I came up with, a design I came up with about uh, just over 20 years ago. I made this prototype, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the prototype, the concept, and then we're gonna take an in-depth look at the parts of this, how it works, and we're gonna look at the pros and cons. Let's get right into it. So the double barrel throttle body. Now, why is it called the double barrel throttle body? Well, because unlike conventional throttle bodies where it uses a throttle blade, this design uses two barrels inside the throttle body housing and they're linked together uh, via a, a gear and then while they rotate, they rotate opposite ways, there's a cutout inside those barrels and this um, makes it that you have this unrestricted airflow through the uh, throttle body. Unlike a conventional uh, throttle body with a butterfly or a valve there, um, as you open it, you still have the uh, interruption of the shaft holding that butterfly valve or the actual uh, valve that opens up inside the throttle body. This one here has nothing. So if you take a look at it, as I open up, there's actually a hole right through, no restriction. So why did I make up this type of throttle body? Why not just use the conventional type of throttle body with a throttle blade? Well. All concepts, they usually come from um, trying to figure out a problem. Now, at the moment, at the time I made up these throttle bodies, we were having a problem with uh, turbocharging um, certain types of motorcycles and having that um, airflow once shut off uh, from the throttle blade, we would have throttle blades bending. So I came up with this idea to stop that from happening because now we have this really thick um, uh, throttle uh, barrel that cannot do that. It cannot bend under that kind of pressure. And that's basically was the concept or the idea. That's where it came from, uh, was mainly to stop certain things from happening under turbocharging application. Now, that being said, it can be used for any application, really. Uh, normally aspirated, turbocharging, supercharging. It doesn't really matter. The concept still works uh, for all those types of um, uh, uh, engines. Now, another thing too with this is under certain regulations in racing, you can only have a certain amount or a certain size of bore when it comes to throttle body. Now, because this has no interruptions or nothing hindering that airflow, you actually get a bigger displacement. So if this was a 45 millimeter and the restriction was 45 millimeter, this would act more like a 47 or 48 millimeter, um, having more airflow than your conventional type. And that was another uh, good part of us uh, or myself designing this is uh, getting around that restriction to throttle body diameter size and actually you know it flows more than something else that had the same diameter okay so let's take a little bit closer look at the components of the throttle body we'll take this apart and then we'll talk a little bit about um, each component it has so this uh, concept was actually made and tested uh, for a Hayabusa. So from 99 all the way to, I think, 2006, uh, this actually, this position of this throttle body, the size is made for that type of motorcycle. And that's what this throttle body was tested on. And you can see the, the actual uh, ports for the... Uh, injectors or for that type of motorcycle and also the throttle uh, the fuel rail that's put on here is also made from that um, type of motorcycle the diameter of the bores 
actually fit right on that type of motorcycle. Okay, so the way this is designed is that we have these two front plates that hold all those throttle, bo throttle bodies together. So they're all separate units, but its spacing is all held together by this clamp and this clamp in the back. And I'm gonna first start off by taking all of these screws off the front and back. Okay, and for these uh, fuel injection holders, and there's a vacuum also here, and this, I, again, is specifically for the Hayabusa, and you can see they come off, and there's an O-ring here to make sure there's a seal right on this face here. Okay, so now this front plate comes out and there are some O-rings or O-ring grooves on here that O-rings aren't on there, but there are O-ring grooves here. Make sure there's a good seal. Now, these throttle bodies should come apart. And you can see that they're all individual. And then tying them together is this kind of like a universal joint or a dog bone that goes in there and attaches to each one so it drives those uh, those barrels all together okay so now you can see it a little bit better and if i show you the close-up of this you can see this is the back side and as it turns and opens up, you have that free flowing. Okay, there's a stop, so it stops, closes off the throttle body or the airflow, and then opens up to a nice gradual flow. And then wide open, it's completely open. No restriction at all. So let's take apart one of these and see what it looks like inside. Okay, we're gonna take these caps off. I'm gonna take the one off on this side first. And on this side, you could see that these rotors have this little protrusion here. And this is the stop and the full throttle stop okay and on the opposite side here you can see it's just wide open there's an o-ring there and we have these two barrels that are geared together and they rotate both together now this is just anodized and these here are hard anodized with uh, Teflon impregnated in. I'm gonna take this O-ring off and I'm gonna pull out these barrels. And now you can see what they look like. So they're all precision machines because the bore has to be a certain diameter so it slides in there. And again, this is my prototype, so there is no bearings in this one. It's just basically two different types of coatings so they don't interfere with each other or seize in the bores. Okay, so now we can see what it does. So now you can see all the components that come together to make these uh, this type of throttle body possible again this is the end one with the spring and you could see it open and close really nicely
So this concept was made into the prototype to kind of um, see if the concept would work, and it did. We tested this a few times and had a couple of dyno runs, and we saw that we had a lot more mid-range, and if you had the right tuning, you could get some more horsepower um, with, again, with the same size diameter uh, bore than stock. Um, now, what I didn't like about this, and especially this concept on something that's an inline four cylinder, is uh, tying them together. And at first, when I did this concept, I, we put them together with these little joints, okay? But we really need adjustability between each one of these joints uh, to make sure that each throttle body was opened exactly the same to each other. So we didn't have this varying uh, throttle or varying RPM w between each one. Now that was one of the things that we had to change because already the concept uh, or the prototype was a little bit too big. There was a lot of things that were bolted on and you could see how like bulky it is. So what I did next is design a newer concept, something that um, would use ball bearings and be all incorporated into one. And I'll show you that right now, what that next concept or that next prototype looked like. Now with this second prototype, we eliminated the problem of mounting these pieces on the front, uh, mounting the other parts on the back. It's a lot more, a lot smaller, more compact if you look at the two. And instead of having the coating and just riding on the other aluminum, now the throttle barrels will house ball bearings on both sides. So that was the next concept and I am still working on the concept. It's been a few years, but I think now I, I'm kind of getting back into this because uh, technology kind of has, has caught up with this type of throttle body. And what I mean by that is uh, 20 years ago, we didn't really have many things running fly by wire. And I think this type of throttle body would run a lot better uh, with a servo on it than trying to run um, a cable as this old concept was. So that's why I'm gonna kind of re revamp this so I can make it work for um, the fly by wire system or with a servo. Um, that could be programmed for each one of these throttle bodies or uh, for one big throttle body. Now, if you have, and I'm kind of reaching out to um, everyone um, that is watching this video, but if you have or know of somebody with um, a fast vehicle, and I'm trying to um, go to the automotive side, so a fast car, uh, something that maybe they want to uh, use for record breaking and you want to try this type of throttle body, reach out to me at bonafabcustom at gmail.com. Let me know what you have or let me know what you're thinking and maybe we can collaborate on something using this concept that I came up with. So thanks everybody for watching. I wanted to kind of show you a little bit about uh, behind the scenes on this throttle body. I know I, I've had it posted a couple of times and people were asking, so I wanted to kind of um, uh, kind of show how it worked and what the concept was and a little bit about its history. But uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and push that button for notifications for more videos just like this one.